Good evening, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our beloved Alakwai. We continue the Book of the Divine Mother, Book 3, Canto 3, The House of the Spirit and the New Creation. Beginning, I believe, the fourth line from the top. Yeah, we can you wish begin from there. Right. So the mother gave this message that a new world based on truth. So, of course, everyone has their own idea of truth. One of the idea of truth is it's a harsh, bare reality. So if you start with that, then you start cutting, eliminating everything. Neti neti. But when we read here, the description of the truth world, we discover it's one with harmony. It's a very harmonious whole. So there is a message of the mother where she says, truth is supreme harmony and delight. Yes. It's not a harsh, bare reality, but it's a harmony based on oneness, which is the core of love. So we find that and that's what makes it very uh, interesting and novel. And also what is that oneness? What is that love? All this comes out beautifully. So how we can create that some semblance of that here upon earth, which is our aim and aspiration. None was apart, none lived for himself alone. Each lived for God in him and God in all. Each soulness inexpressibly held the whole. So, uh, commune living is a training in that. It's not an end, but it's a training. It's a means to discover this. Of course, one can discover it even, you know, going within. But uh, when we begin to live in a community, we begin to discover it in very uh, simple, practical ways. For example, in the ashram, we have many departments. So, one can be doing this work, that work. One may be, you know, tilling the soil, digging the garden, Another may be washing the utensils, third one may be writing poetry, a fourth one may be, you know, teaching in the school, uh, another one music. But if you ask all of them, why are you doing it? So they will all say either we want to serve the mother or out of love for the mother. This is the original sense. Now what it becomes over a period of time, how many hours of work you are putting in and you know, what you are getting, that's a different, that's a distortion. Mm. But originally, when you read, there is a very beautiful book, Life in the Shirobindu Ashram by Narayan Prashad. Mm. It's a must read for those who want to yes. know what ashram meant, means and yes. meant. What it becomes is a different story, you know, over a period of time, it becomes changes. Like any communal life, it goes through many transmutations, that's okay. But its original sense is that there is a life centered around the one. So, nobody was doing it for oneself. Whereas in outside life, when we read mother's dream, yes. it's not like I am writing poetry to become famous. I am teaching in the school because I am a bigger man than, you know, more respectable uh, as a teacher or a doctor than as somebody mm -hmm. washing utensils. Uh, none of these distinctions hold valid when we do her work and center around her. Or I am doing this job because I can get more money. None of these. As long as these motives are there, one-upmanship, there cannot be a new world, a world based on truth, whatever heart may may try. We may make the most perfect, outwardly, practical, moneyed place, but that means nothing. So it is the centering which is important. So no, nobody lived for himself, but lived for the one. And therefore, everything was connected in a wholeness. That is the beauty. You know, when somebody asks Sri that uh, working in dining room, that I don't want to work in dining room. I have come to serve you, not the sadhaks. Mm -hmm. So Sri said, by that logic, I am also serving the sadhaks. <laughs> when I write letters or write this. This training you get here. Yes. Of course, if one stops only with the mechanical aspect, but the real sense is this inner training. We should mention Auroville. Yes, of course. Because mother's extension of yes, this collective absolutely. experience yes. is especially valid in Orville. Yes, but the moment we put into different department than walls, then there is a problem, which is what has to be, has to go. And it cannot go by any outer means. 
at least not in this place because here the only true solution will work same with india it cannot go by any outer means it will go with only the true solution if you try to have adjustment outer tolerance this that it won't work debate dialogue discussion it won't work i have a story of the dining room yes that you may like i yes, think you know it already <laughs> which one? but it's the one where huta hmm. wants is doing the spoons and she wants to do the plates and the gentleman who does the plates says to her i don't do too well in my consciousness with spoons so i have to do the plates and he didn't let her do the plates <laughs> i have a similar experience on a different note so whenever i used to come here for few days few days means 20 25 days so i would uh, take up work in dining room where they are the most easily available and washing section because they always need people so uh, i used to think that well uh, the what we can do is wash the plates but consciousness washing only you can do a lot so this was the story of kevat and very close to my heart so i remember the first day i took up the plates and you know uh, started with as if i am doing something very nicely well the boy next to me he said that's not how it is done <laughs> air force doctor <laughs> you are going to teach me so then i realized oh pride thou hast many names and masks <laughs> i said forget the air force and forget the doctor you teach me oh it was music and poetry to see him work he took five plates and when he put in the water i remember that scene i can't conjure it so all the outer side of all the plates opened up while the inner side he held with his hand i can't imagine till date how he could do it then i realized it's not about the technique but the consciousness in the hands this was a, he didn't tell in so many words he just taught me how to do it outwardly but i got the clue from there that it's not the technique but the consciousness if you are in the right consciousness technique and uh, method will develop so that is the whole thing and it teaches you it trains you you know you are not doing this for this or that but only to serve her then another very interesting thing that also we see here their oneness was not tied to monotone mm -hmm. it showed a thousand aspects of itself so we think of oneness as sameness and it's a common flaw someone asked your window this uh, letter where he says uh, i see that the divine mother deals differently to, with different people she gives different time her way is different so but how can it be because divine has to be an example of equality and oneness so there shobindo speaks of this yes that it is a absurd way to look at it she deals with each one based on the law of truth unfolding in each one which is different it's not the same in one person she would say shobindo himself gave so much leeway to dilip kumar roy oh. going out whatever 100 things experiment to another person he would say sit tight stay here don't go out so it's not monotone and each one in different ways you know now it's very difficult to even imagine that one can serve the divine only through music this bhava was coming to me today that how about you know if i don't do anything just sing your name and enjoy and be in that ecstasy it is so ecstatic you know so but today it will is impossible to convince anyone that just by singing the lord's name you are actually <laughs> you know <laughs> working and helping the community now it has come you know from the divine to community how what you are doing for community but actually everything that expresses the divine uh, arj within whatever you may be doing is helping the whole world move towards that and that's what that that oneness is not tied to monotone in thousand ways so that is the beauty of the supramental world it's calm immutable stability a bore on a changeless ground forever safe compelled to a spontaneous servitude now look at it so what was the ground of consciousness on which everyone stood and worked and that ground of consciousness here is the mother or 
if you want to put it in more secular way, the supramental truth, if that is appealing. <laughs> and look at this wonderful line. A bore on a changeless ground, forever safe, compelled to a spontaneous servitude. Nobody was compelling anyone that you have to do this, you have to serve. It came spontaneously. Unchanging ground, forever safe. So if your job was taken away, it didn't mean that, you know, doesn't matter. That ground is there. It happened a couple of years back. One of the sadhikas was telling me that, you know, this problem took place and now she is not given any work. So all kinds of things. She was going through difficult time. I said, what is your problem? You'd be happy. In, you can go to Samadhi, pray. You are part of the ashram. Enjoy. What's there? The divine wants us to be happy. Sometimes he takes away the work. There is a beautiful um, passage in of Shurabindu, the delight of works. And there he says, the sword has a joy in the hiss and the play. The sword has a joy when it is not used, but lying in the side. The sword has a joy when it is broken and thrown aside. That equal joy discover. That equal joy can only come when we have discovered this ground within. But if the ground is based on how much work I am doing and what, my position, prestige, then, you know, one is forever insecure. So, step by step, everything is being beautifully revealed to us. The ever-changing, incalculable steps, the seeming reckless dances, subtle plan of immense world forces in their perfect play. Now, this is, you know, the ever-changing events, circumstances, people. Here, we are on that fast-forward evolution, so it happens. So, it can be sometimes very disorienting. But how to keep orienting ourselves? By the mother. <laughs> she is there. <laughs> Whatever may change outwardly. But she is there. That doesn't change. That is, she says, even if you go far, very far, far away from Pondicherry, you may be in France or other side of the world, I am with you. Even when you sink, I don't stand on the shore, but I sink with you. Now, when we develop that consciousness inside, then this state comes spontaneously. These are all states of consciousness that the ever incalculable dance steps, you know, today is something you are sure, tomorrow it is just taken away from you. Incalculable. Still, Krishna is dancing with you. He has not abandoned you. So at the end of the day, what else matters? And he says, the seeming reckless dances subtle plan. It looks reckless. Accidents in yeah. time. Yes. And yet there is behind it steps of the perfect play. Appearance looked back to its hidden truth and made of difference, oneness, smiling play, like a grand orchestra. So this experience I had when I was, uh, first time I participated in 2nd December program. So as I entered, this line kept uh, going through my head. A million footsteps marching to a single will. There were so many forms. I think some of us have seen the 2nd December program, right? So many different exercises, drills, this, that. But everybody ultimately is woven around her, marching to a single will. And we are trying to attune ourselves. Outwardly it may look like, you know, to the captain, this or that. But it's attunement to the... Divine Mother and each one who attunes to her helps everybody else to attune. So this was the beauty. Difference, oneness, smiling play. It made all persons fractions of the unique. 1.0, Look at it. They are all fractions of the unique. <laughs> all. Whatever way we put it, one divided by something, or it's fraction of the unique. Everything is connected to that. So, it's one. Yet all were beings, secret integers. Each of them had a meaning and a sense and uniqueness. You can't do away with that step. All struggle was turned to a sweet strife of love in the harmonized circle of a sure embrace. You see in Krishna's dealings with gopi, gopis, you get this uh, bhava. It's captured there. 
So sometimes some gopis and gops they are getting angry with Krishna. Some of them are happy with him. And ultimately they even sometimes give, you know, what is called in Hindi ulana. What, what, will, what will be it in English? Some kind of a reparty or something, uh, you know, complain. You Krishna, you are giving more attention to this and less to... But Krishna smiles and then again, okay, I am also attended. Sweet strife of love. It is not turning into why? Because he is there to take care of everyone. All struggle was turned to a sweet strife of love in the harmonized circle of a sure embrace. You may be abandoned by anyone, but she holds you in her embrace. That's what you ultimately end up discovering. Identities reconciling happiness gave a rich security to difference. Identity is reconciling happiness. Which identity? With the divine. So it doesn't matter what's happening outside. It gave a rich security to difference. You don't feel, oh, I'm being asked to do this. It's some low work and you know, I'm not asked to visit the room every day. So I am far from divine. People used to have these notions that somebody who is working in Shurbindo's room, mother's room, they are special people. Even now people have these ignorant notions. So I tell them, please read when mother is there, then what they have written about. Mm. People used to feel that. Yes. And there are number of letters of Shurbindo that if you start judging by these appearances, you will be totally mistaken. There was one of the sadhaks who hardly came, even for darshan he would not go. Someone complained to mother. He says, oh, he doesn't need, he is all the time living in me and... Uh, uh, he is conscious of me within and all the time I am holding him. Now that is a state of consciousness. So rich security. Look at it. Why? By identities reconciling happiness. Whatever difference may be there. What is the reconciling happiness? We all belong to her. The day this state awakens in us, there is no issue. When we forget it, when we start defining her, limiting her to this or that idea, then the problem starts. But look at this description of this a truth word. Where is in it harshness and bareness? <laughs> it's richness. The word is rich. On a meeting line of hazardous extremes, the game of games was played to its breaking point. What is this game of games? Great adventure. Where through self-finding, by divine self-loss, there leaps out unity's supreme delight. Wonderful line. What is this self-finding through divine self-loss? Mm. Of course, typical example, classic example is the Lord himself. Discovering himself in multiple ways, in multiple beings. So sometimes people say yoga, I say yes, we are not doing yoga, it is mother who is doing yoga in everyone. What is she doing yoga for? It is her own discovery in countless ways. One of my favorite bhajans which uh, I love its lines are uh, in Bengali, I'll uh, say in English later. Amar eke Krishna mon bharena Ami anant Krishna dube chahi I am not satisfied with one Krishna. <laughs> I want countless Krishnas, infinite Krishnas. This is why creation is there, to multiply delight. That's why the divine has created differences, varieties, multitudes. If he wanted sameness, there would have been only sameness. If he wanted nirvana, there would have been no creation. But the fact that he created rich difference, extremes, completely opposite. And yet, what is it? It is another mask of the same one. One place Shirvinda says that as long as I would fall earlier in sin, I would get up and, you know, I would um, feel bad. I would curse him and all that. And uh, then I started discovering that who is pushing me? It is he who is pushing me. So then he says, I looked at him at the corner of my eyes. Oh, trickster, you are at your tricks again. But I had to still pardon him. <laughs> Even when he says that. <laughs> because then you discover this mighty play. And all its everything at the end you discover is but one. His play. 
so that is what we have to discover but for that the divine self loss this solitary isolated my moksha my this thing if you want to walk that path then you don't discover this unity which is spread in creation that is one path that is a divine self my here divine self loss you plunge into it but keeping that always within you where through self finding by divine self loss there leaps out unity supreme delight then you discover the grand unity which is there in creation and the supreme delight whose blissful undivided sweetness feels a communality of the absolute how to describe this line communality you shouldn't use the word communal and communes but if you look at the trace the origin communal comes from commune if you look at the roots what's a commune where people come together when it becomes communal then when it is organized around one idea and that is the only one or a religious path that's how sects come out but what is this commune the mother says at one place i cherish for thee a cult without limits it is a communality of the absolute you can't define or limit him by this my thought or your thought my opinion your opinion it's not a place for opinions everybody moves in their own way and they were right to their opinion no doubt about it and that's your path but it is not that it is a communality of the absolute not commonality no it's communality, communality. <laughs> it's an amazing word i think you would there was no sob of suffering anywhere experience ran from point to point of joy bliss was the pure undying truth of things all nature was a conscious front of god a wisdom worked in all self moved self sure a plenitude of illimitable light and authenticity of intuitive truth a glory and passion of creative force infallible leaping from eternity the moment's thought inspired the passing act a word a laughter sprang from silence breast a rhythm of beauty in the calm of space a knowledge in the fathomless heart of time so why is suffering suffering is because of ignorance what is ignorance the sense of separateness that's the origin of suffering when i cut myself off from the one truth reality then suffering will come in one way or the other it comes intellectually oh world should be thinking everybody should think like me now if somebody close to me doesn't think like me i begin to suffer why doesn't he share my thoughts same with feelings i feel that person doesn't feel same way so suffering then physical same thing self and not self all starts with separation but where there is oneness how there can be suffering so that's why she says there was no sob of suffering anywhere experience ran from point to point of joy when i read those early days early morning sadhaks first thing mother's balcony darshan 6 o'clock <laughs> after balcony darshan then they are going for whatever work then vegetable darshan then flower darshan so at night final meditation with the mother so they are running from place to place but constantly referring back if you look at the ashram routine it is organized in such a way to train the consciousness to be centered around the one so that you don't lose that just imagine what kind of life so self experience ran from point to point of joy these were the moments high moments like peak so after having that darshan how can you be unhappy and have a grousy face if somebody tells you something then you are preparing for the next <laughs> those time people some of them have told me how they used to you know literally run oh we would to be at 6:15 darshan we would run then the vegetable darshan vegetables would come mother would come out to see 
then the flower darshan terrace Terrace, Terrace Darshan, Darshan. <laughs> when she's walking. So all these, you know, people who are constantly looking forward to those things and who is who has the time to bother about, you know, those petty things. So this is how the experience runs from point to point of joy when we are in that state of union inwardly with the Lord. Bliss was the pure, undying truth of things. Everything was so joyous, so happy. All nature was a conscious front of God. So what we call as nature, oh, this is a challna, deception, illusion, terrible, stay away from nature. It was rhythms and expressions of the supreme harmonist. You know, this running reminds me, uh, Amyoda, mm. Amyo Ganguly, that um, our Sunil Das family. Yes. So, you know, he, he was given the task of when mother would come in the car, she used to open the door to let mother. She gave a little, little work to everybody so that they are very happy. It's not that she requires anyone. She can manage by herself everything. But you know, the joy and so, but he doesn't want to lose the sight of the mother when she is coming out and getting into the car. That also he wants to see. So he would be standing. When mother has got into the car, he would run super speed. To reach to the playground before she has come to open the door. What a joy, you know. Experience ran from point to point of joy. <laughs> Literally ran. All nature was a conscious front of God. A wisdom worked in all. Self-moved, self-sure. A plenitude of illimitable light. An authenticity of intuitive truth. That is the only authentic thing. Rational truth is a doubtful thing when it comes to spiritual matters and even about yes. the world. That's why you see all rational people will say, no, no, it may apply in world. But look at the history of science and you will understand that how rational truths are very relative. Why? Because it depends on data gathered by the imperfect senses. So based on a certain data, rationally you arrive at this is truth. After some time, everything which was believed as truth, this solid world, suddenly it is undone. Why? Because new data came in. <laughs> everything changes. Then as you proceed, another data comes in. Everything changes. Because rational truth is like that. It and is very relative. And still people want empirical knowledge. <laughs> yes, because uh, naturally there is no access to the higher thing and they don't even believe it's possible. Yes. But the intuitive truth is something that stands. Now look at the example of this because people often say what is the proof? Rational truth we have seen. How science changes. Uh, moving through reason. This doesn't mean reason should not be there. It has its place. Be reasonable. Control the vital impulses to you know organize your life. Reason has a great place. But when it comes to truth, it fails. But look at intuitive truths. 10,000 years back, a Rishi is sitting on mountain top, said Sarv Khalvidam Brahman. 10,000 years down the line, whether in US, Europe or India, the mystic says the same thing. And he says you can verify it. It doesn't change. It's because it's an intuitive truth. It's seen by the intuitive vision. It won't change. But rational truths will keep changing. You know, when you try to define God, for example, by reason, you create philosophies. It will keep changing and there will be war, warring sects. But that discovery which only intuition can make, that will not change. So, Sri Aurobindo says, I have been testing more yes. intently than any scientist, scientist in his laboratories. So, this is the authenticity of intuitive truth, a glory and passion of creative force. Why he is bringing now that creative force in countless ways she is working. And she knows what she is doing. So many examples. I remember once uh, Jayanti Bhai, he, some of these, it's very interesting to meet these uh, people. And you know, now thanks, you have so many interviews. Otherwise, all this uh, would have been lost. So um, he was telling me that when he came, he asked mother what work I should do. Mother said, you teach French. Say, but mother, I don't know French. Yeah. Yeah. She says, I am telling you, you teach French. Now, <laughs> it's a supreme has told. So he learned French. He became a very loved and adorable teacher in the school. 
one what of the, she one saw, of the most loved most loved what she saw what was needed for him she knew same thing with our um, uh, ved prakashi in dining room he was an economist master in economics so people told him after some time when they saw he is looking out a dining room he said what work you are doing your capacities are not being utilized well yes he said no mother knows what is best for me and then he added half jokingly that i am an economist i am the right person to be in dining room <laughs> but look at you know somebody as oh economist so much he is educated man you have put him in charge of dining room where he will supervise cooking and utensil washing but she knows what is best for each one so creative force how it's expressing based on intuitive truth and that creative force in him designed the new containers yes yes for the rice lots in of which work. he put steam in between two metal things and he could cook 100 kilos of rice in 5 minutes yes lots and lots of things incredible many other aeronautical engineer yeah creating nut bolts but much of what you see today cleaning the tennis ground to build a you know fill it with uh, now this creative force how she works gives what is needed for each one and then he adds infallible leaping from eternity it's not a moment's truth it enters the moment and the play of time but it is something this sees all the past present future the moments thought inspired the passing act normally what inspires the passing act we are not inspired but we calculate should i should i not if i do this moments thought inspired the passing act you know that example of udarda he was he saw a lady in the car stopping and the driver told ki madam i have to just go inside the ashram do namas pranam and come back this lady kept sitting so udarda suddenly had an impulse to say it's true that it is more difficult to make a rich man turn to god than to make a camel pass to the eye of an idiot but he didn't say he thought it's very improper and rude so he told mother mother see i had this impulse but i controlled myself mother said but i had implanted this thought in you to tell her if you told her she may have turned <laughs> sometimes you need to hear not just sweet things but the karela <laughs> the bitter gourd so if you look at life that way it just changes you know a word a laughter sprang from silence breast a rhythm of beauty in the calm of space in knowledge in the fathomless heart of time now where is harshness and bareness here yes. this is the home of truth and look how it continues all turn to all without reserves recoil now we can see how many reserves we have oh this person oh he is not my type he is not my language he is not my status he is not my state he is not my i don't know my my as if my world it should be toss toy son wanting everybody to speak the same language she said it should be very dull and boring world he wanted to unify the world by making everybody speak the same language it will be a very dull and boring world so this aspect you must learn all languages that's a different thing but to compel that everybody should speak the same language it's not the way divine would want to create this world so look here he says that all turn to all without reserves recoil not like you know divide this north this south this east this west so many kinds of uh, walls in which we live sometimes i tell when someone speaks this language i said we are here to discover the one self in all creation we are not even able to come out of our statehood forget about you know discovering and reserves recoil, recoil. oh this person i you know i don't gel with this person precisely that person is there because you don't gel and you have to learn how to gel yes <laughs> by discovering the supreme glow which is in all yes gel 
<laughs> whatever it is mother's child you know i had this uh, experience very interestingly in pune actually i had this big when i read about dilip kumar roy had and i heard that he left you know mother and didn't couldn't accept as i am not going to read his book so you know this is a beautiful book by the way you know shirbindo came to me but i looked at the title from that lens oh uh. he thinks very great of himself ha huh? shirbindo came to me so all that somebody told me it's a lovely book i said i'm not going to read it i am not going to read somebody who has you know thought like that about mother then what happened uh, suddenly i got a <laughs> Uh, society someone requested me that uh, someone means in the admin they needed cassettes of dilip kumar roy i was in pune where his ashram was there and people had asked me i said i am not going there now i had to go because they couldn't find anywhere and there is no other place you have to go there that's why they have asked me to go so i went i said abhi is mother's work i have to break all my notions so of course his samadhi indra ji samadhi and no mother only shurbindo and all kinds of confusion but what i uh, almost i would say heard i mean mother is very personal now suddenly i have started speaking about it was that he whom i have accepted who are you to refuse and reject yes uh, and yes. tears in my eyes as i recapture that state he whom i have accepted who are you to re- refuse and reject i said how stupid and silly lord has showered mother has told him we are here only to please shurbindo yes. she kept a room for 14 years even after he has gone away that his soul comes every night to rest there and how stupid of me to judge him we don't know what is the relation between his soul and the in the first In the early 60s I found the book Sri Aurobind came to me and it cost me 1 rupee and there he mentions mother quite often yeah he went through that till for quite some time for quite some time though later on of course uh, all things happened even wrote to nehru and all that it's a very sad and he realized that tragic uh, mistake it is said that toward the end he realized like barinda but said after all she is mother or she like uh, harinjanath charpanya oh his case is of course uh, but dilip kumar roy when he was called at in kolkata to install shivindu's relics he just couldn't speak he, just, he was a erudite speaker and music par excellence yes. he would just cry and cry and all that he could say is my lord my lord my lord and he shared that you know i have made a big mistake but she is the mother same with barinda i know that it's my ego which made me come away yes but she is jagat janani she is compassionate so that's where when we look at life from that standpoint and when you look at it in a vaster sense whom has the divine rejected so look even that the mother that's when one enters that state where it's not to become indiscriminate and not know what is what but they here it's about rejecting people it's not about not knowing where one is what movement is what so there is a beautiful line in the mother where he describes maheshwari and says even the asuras and rakshasas and pishachas are her children <laughs> he pishacha also her children who are we <laughs> to tell oh this well my mother says it yeah they too are my children is there is shurbindo has declared it so openly then you discover a different uh, way and okay we don't have those eyes so we may forget but we have to keep reminding and reorienting ourselves and that's what is revealed here that all turn to all without reserves recoil a single ecstasy without a break then it's not like oh i'm meeting my friend i'm so happy oh this fellow i have to spend time with him here yeah, there is constant ecstasy love was a close and thrilled identity in the throbbing heart of all that luminous life so love is not i love you 
it's a identity meaning thereby whom do i love i love myself but in the deepest sense highest sense shivinda says that in his poem immortal love it says that if i loved you only for your face it will not last long if i loved you for sweet voice and your uh, you know heart of ruth uh, time might pursue might reach but i have loved for thyself indeed myself with myself i have snared change i exceed and am for time prepared whom i i love i love myself in the highest sense or the divine in the person if you want to put it as a bhakta <laughs> but <laughs> then whom are you ensnared with yeah. and then you leave it uh, lord you are the one you ultimately end up <laughs> without loving ourselves how can we love anyone yeah. else but look at here the thrill identity why because you discover the same one all masks but is the same one christ says love yeah. thy neighbor Ah. as thyself yes that's how it and that's what shurbindo says is the basis of friendship also he speaks of the basis of love is this and the basis of friendship also is the self in you reaching out to the self same self in another that is a true basis of friendship a universal vision that unites a sympathy of nerve replying to nerve hearing that listens to thoughts inner sound how much chaos because you said like this when did i say five years back but what is thoughts inner sound the state of consciousness hmm. i didn't mean it like this i meant good thoughts inner sound not what is expressed outside and follows the rhythmic meanings of the heart see this one knows that it's not outward but the sense in the heart i am reminded of that story in ramayana where you know mata sita tells lakshman that you go your brother is in distress because marich has played a game while dying he suddenly says rama rama so he says that you know your brother is in trouble lakshman says i am confident nobody on this earth can touch my brother he is unparalleled but she keeps on then at one point she says oh you are eyeing upon me something like that that's why you are not listening and going i am telling you your brother is in danger so then lakshmana goes putting the lakshman rekha now why sita would say that now it's interesting because she has assumed an avidyamai form that is all. but also because that is a need of the leela lakshman will not <laughs> become a participant in the leela because in his wisdom he is not doing what is needed to be done so divine can even assume a most ignorant form for the sake of the grand leela lakshman has to go how dare ravana come here <laughs> and she steps out of so you see it is that um, meaning of the heart it touch that needs not hands to feel to clasp where there the native means of consciousness and heighten the intimacy of soul with soul so we need instruments the body is an instrument of the soul and you need touch and holding and grasp are a way to communicate shobindo used the word an imperfect means to communicate what's going on inside you because love wants that intimacy and union so it uses these inadequate means that love uses that's how he describes inadequate means some kind of contact but here one didn't need any senses soul contact is there but there is also a means of contact which doesn't need these i think in when sachivan and savitri are together he says uh, the imperfect yeah that's where the he, he describes means. love yes, yes yes and then he says that the imperfect means and signs that love must yeah, use that love must use yes limb cries for answering limb yes yes so that's where he says and you know because you want that deep uh, integral intimacy but how do you do it so you try it with the body and body is a very imperfect instrument that's the whole problem 
But there you didn't need because consciousness can reach out. How the Divine Mother knew about and knows about all of us. Much more than what we know because it is not through these means. A grand orchestra of spiritual powers, a diapason of soul interchange, harmonized a oneness deep, immeasurable. This oneness as we can see is beyond anything that the mind can fathom. In these new worlds projected he became a portion of the universal gaze, a station of the all-inhabiting light, a ripple on a single sea of peace. Now Ashpati has entered this world, he is identified with it and he discovered that in this world each one becomes an aspect, a mode of manifestation of the divine. And when we discover that then there is no quarrel, no competition, no ambition, each one is meant to express one aspect or mode of the divine. And that is the beauty of this world, which he has now discovered. His mind answered to countless communing minds. His words were syllables of the cosmos speech. His life a field of the vast cosmic stir. So now he has become so vast that his mind is communing with unseen entities. And what he is expressing is not just my view, my desire, my thought, but something which is coming from the vast cosmic store and must reach out. So there is no calculation, preparation or intellectual process. Ah, there it comes, that line. He felt the footsteps of a million wills moving in unison to a single will. There it is, yes. And the line that has flashed to me was, Marching, because that's the place. So he fetched the all oh, so many this direction, that direction. If you go in an ocean current, from the surface you can say, oh, this wave is going this way, this is going this way, that way. Jump into the ocean. See, there is only one direction it goes <laughs> away from the shore, away from the safety, away from the narrow bounds towards the fathomless. But there is no other direction. Till you can go, it will take you, otherwise you will be drowned. There also the sand will drag you, push you. <laughs> but there is only one direction. This is the original Vedanta. That all, all without exception are going in this mighty journey towards the one. Nobody. Even if you try to swim against the current, sea will carry you. Only you will feel strained, you will feel tired, exhausted, suffer. But sea has only one direction. That is, take everybody towards its heart. That's how this passage had started. As if a sea exploring its own depths. Which is a beautiful image. That from the outermost to the inmost, it's one life. That's what he's experiencing now. A stream, ever newborn that never dies. Caught in its thousandfold currents, ravishing flow. With eddies of immortal sweetness thrilled. So as he is going through different waves, and, ah, this is so nice. Yes. Eddie is, you know, in, in Ganges, the closest experience I have, which is far from what people have is, uh, rafters would have. But I have that, white, what is called as white water rafting. So you oh, sit yes. in the boat and boat goes through. So in Haridwar, they have three currents, which are a bit turbulent. So, you know, you are rafting, then you have one current. And suddenly, you know, the boat rocks. And you rock with it and you have the thrill of, ah, as if it will turn. Then you'll say, then it stabilizes. Then there is a second one. It's a little more turbulent. Then you feel, oh, nothing. Then the third one comes. It's almost like the boat is going to capsize. Mm -hmm. And he tells their life jackets, if you want, you can jump. So of course, everybody jumped except me in the boat. <laughs> so they asked me, don't you want to take the joy? I said, somebody has to be there to pull you guys out and if you are lost to say how many were there <laughs> everybody jumped the doctor speaks <laughs> I am not going to jump I am going to do the <laughs> number keeping <laughs> ok yes come I was actually doing that ok this is, okay, this fellow where is he then he comes back <laughs> so it's fun now you look at the sweet each eddy which is a turbulent space, but it only added to the sweetness and the joy. So, <laughs> this, with eddies of immortal sweetness thrill, he bore, coiling through his members as they passed, calm movements of interminable delight. 
now comes a master line. Master the line. place of a myriad, myriads who are oh, one. The bliss of oneness becomes the bliss of multiplicity. That is the goal of creation if you want to put it as a goal. And why truth consciousness? Because only on that basis you can experience this bliss of myriad myriads. But creation is meant for delight, for experiencing the delight of oneness changing into a delight of multiplicity. But all this is a passage. This suffering, then discovering the truth, the basis. Then you discover that totality. So we'll stop here. It's so wonderful. We'll continue tomorrow. <laughs>